Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Makes. A bit of a different video for you today, but one that I think many of you will appreciate. I asked one of my students, uh, Kayvon Peju, to join me for an interview because he has such a cool story on how he turned his 3D printing hobby into a business. So just to give you a quick summary before we get into the interview, uh, Kayvon got into 3D printing at the start of the pandemic. You know, this was a time where many of us looked for new hobbies to fill in for the things we could no longer do due to lockdowns and just wanting to stay safe and protect others. Uh, some started making sourdough bread, some started knitting, and some started 3D printing. Kayvon got his first 3D printer and started with downloading and printing other people's designs, but this got old really quick and he realized that he wanted to design his own stuff. So eventually he made his way to my YouTube channel and ended up enrolling in my Fusion 360 Quick Start course and then onto my 3D Printing Design Academy and also to my weekly live class. Uh, right away he started designing his own stuff and this led him to come up with a 3D printed accessory to an exercise equipment he was using. He found it extremely useful and printed a few more for his friends to try and they really liked it so he then took the next step and posted the model on Etsy where he now sells it worldwide. He opened up his Etsy shop around the summer of 2021 and at the time of me posting this video if we check his Etsy shop he sold 575 units at $49.99 each, which is almost $30,000 in sales. Remember, this is a hobby turned business and he's not even a full year into this. So I asked Kayvon to join me to talk about his journey because I think many of you will find the knowledge he's going to share about his experience going through this process uh, and uh, the advice he's going to give to be very valuable, especially if you're looking to do something similar. The video is a bit long and I was originally going to cut it back quite a bit. Uh, but as I started editing the video, I just couldn't do it. There just wasn't that much that I felt I should cut. All right, enough intro. Let's dive into the interview. And if you have any questions about anything we discuss, I'll leave it in the comments below. And I'm sure Kayvon will be happy to answer some of your questions. Hey, Kayvon. Hey, good morning or afternoon for you. How yeah, are you? for me, it's afternoon. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. Good. Yeah, thanks for doing Excited. this. I've actually, um, I've been meaning to do this for a while. And uh, finally, it's, it was like one of those things where I'm just like, I just got to schedule this. Like, just throw it in the calendar and then you'll have no excuse. <laughs> so <laughs> last week, I was like, let me just send them an email now and then got it in the calendar. And I was like, all right, we're in. <laughs> Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, so the reason I I wanted to do this call is because I think you I mean, you have a, a really neat story here of um, basically kind of, you know, just kind of summary real quick, but we'll dive into it is, you know, you got into 3D printing and then you learned how to make your own designs and then you had a problem which you were able to design and print your own solution. And then you thought, hmm, like, I wonder if anyone else uh, could use this solution. And you threw it on Etsy. And then, you know, I get an email from you a few days ago. That's just like, you know, I think a few months later from when you started. And it's like, well, you just crossed a huge milestone of $10,000 in sales. So, yeah, it's a pretty incredible story. And I, I think a lot of my, um, you know, subscribers would, would be interested in, in hearing it because I'm, I'm sure there's quite a few who are in that boat. Um, who would, who would want to hear how, you know, how you would do something like this. So, so yeah. Yeah. Um, it's been an interesting ride for sure. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, my, usually my channel um, is more of like tutorials and projects, especially focusing on Fusion 360. Um, but I, I think this is one that, that would really, really resonate. So why don't we start with just give us a little introduction about like who you are, where, where you are, what you do for a living, and then we can like transition to, you know, how you got to, to 3D printing and in and, and, and your journey. Yeah, absolutely. My name is Kayvon Peju. 
I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, specifically more uh, in Redwood City, California, which is roughly about 30 minutes south of San Francisco. And um, I've been living here for quite a few years. And, um, you know, I love this area. I'm a big sports fan and, you know, um, also uh, have a commercial printing business. So I've been, you know, in this business for quite a few years. And as a hobby, um, uh, I refereed soccer, you know, as my kids started when they were really young, playing AY. So I played myself in high school, a little bit of junior college. So I figured I didn't want to play so much because I didn't want to get injured. But, uh, you know, I started helping as a referee, a volunteering, and then just carried on and I've been doing it over 20 years. And, um, you know, in 2019, sort of late in 2019, about September, October, my daughter uh, found I found out something about a like an indoor rowing studio that was um, going to be opening up next to our house. And, you know, I figured, OK, I'll go with her once and see if I can you know, support her or, or just see if I like it and, you know, maybe do it myself. And, uh, you know, five minutes in, I sort of got hooked. And, um, and I've been rowing just about five to seven days a week since then. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, one thing led to another and, um, you know, we, like a few months later, the pandemic hit and, um, you know, I stopped refereeing soccer and, and of course they closed down the studio. And so basically any hobby that I had was taken away with the pandemic, which is, I, I hear it was mostly for everybody. And I saw everybody was getting into all kinds of new hobbies, baking bread and all kinds of things were going on on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So I, I was sort of searching uh, to see if I could find a hobby. And, uh, you know, my background, you know, my degree was actually in industrial technology with emphasis in plastics. So I figured, you know, I'm in a printing business and I have a background in plastics, putting the two together, taking it to the next level, Mm -hmm. 3D printing, maybe the way to go. You know, so I started to do some research and um, I started watching certain channels, the popular ones. You know, I started watching Angus uh, on Maker's Muse and then Devon and Make Anything. Then I got a little bit more serious with Thomas and Letter. And then lastly, I started watching uh, 3D printing there, Joel Telling. Yeah. And it was, uh, I was watching that pretty religiously. And it was one of, during his, one of his episodes that he mentioned you. And by that time, I had done just like anybody, uh, you know, I got a 3D printer, uh, was downloading you know, files from uh, Thingiverse and mm-hmm. printing those. And they were cool, yeah. but it gets old really fast. Yeah, you know, yeah, and you yeah. really want to learn, well, how do they do that? And yeah, I want to make, make my own, own stuff. stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So uh, during one of his episodes, he um, mentioned you. And he said he was shocked that why you don't have more followers. And I go, okay, he must be really good. And uh, so I started watching a few of your um youtube videos and um and right away i really really liked it that your method the way you speak that soft spoken uh, sort of way of teaching that it was it was kind of relaxing and very um, uh, educational so i really liked it and uh, i think shortly after you you put up uh, a free sort of sort of mini series that uh, you had yeah and um so i took that and because i finished it like really fast, you know, Mm -hmm. in a night or I don't know, it was two days or something. And then I wanted more, you know, um, (laughs) of course you got me hooked. And, uh, uh, and I, I started taking your online lesson, um, that you had more sort of, uh, complete. And there was a couple of modules, if I recall. Yeah. I think, did you start with the the design Academy? That one first? Yeah. Design Academy. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So, (laughs) You know, every time I start one of those lessons, I sort of went down a rabbit hole of, oh, I, I got to do this and I got to, because you always ask us yeah. you know, to sort of make your own version. Yeah. Right. And then so, and, and I started doing that and, you know, then you start getting more creative and making yeah. it. So, so a I, couple of things there. Um, so you didn't really get into 3D printing until the pandemic. Like that was kind of what you, so you're looking for a new hobby and it just, so instead of like, 
baking bread or getting into tie dye, you're like, <laughs> I'm going to get a 3D printer. <laughs> that was it. Okay, that's cool. Because you see, I mean, you know, of course, a lot of really sad stories with the pandemic, but you kind of see some like also stories of opportunities that arrived from people, you know, um, either like from being stuck at home, not being able to do their normal routine and, and, you know, finding, uh, finding new things in life. And so for you, that was, that was the 3D printing and 3D design. So, so yeah, that, because we, we had to stay yeah. at home, right? You know, we couldn't yeah. go out much. And I got to say, I mean, not, I, I, for some reason, I thought you had been in it for a while because I mean, seeing what you can do now and it's like, it wasn't that long ago that you started and like what you're designing is pretty incredible. So, um, well, I wouldn't say that, but you know what, I owe it a lot, well, mostly to you because you sort of kind of motivated us and uh, you sort of got me going in this path. And actually it's been an interesting path. And like I said, you know, I went down a rabbit hole. I think in one of the lessons, you know, like, I think the second lesson maybe uh, in that acad design academy course was making a phone stand. Yeah, your own phone stand. Uh, yeah. Right. So I started doing that. And by that time, I had gotten my second printer. I got a Prusa printer. Mm -hmm. And I, I learned how to do color changes, you know. Um, oh, yeah. So I really dove deep into that. And uh, I started making my own uh, phone stands. In fact, I have one here. And, you know, um, ah, there you go. show 49ers. you. <laughs> yeah, the 49ers. And this is just a single color, obviously, mm -hmm. printer, a single extruder printer. And But I, I started doing the layering. And so with the layering, I was able to do accomplish a lot of things and i you know there's another example um with the chevy camaro logo nice. and so i started doing that and um you know i started making gifts for everybody for holidays or whatever you know just staying in the house and not leaving so i was making a lot of these um yeah. based on their hobby i remember that i remember you would send me emails with like all the different ones you were making and they were all personalized for whatever that person's interest was so that was pretty cool. Yeah, I even made made one for me with my desktop <laughs> makes logo and um, you, a few that I gave to to I remember giving one to my sister and she really loved it. But those are really special because you can make them really you can really personalize personalize them right like and it really means right a lot put in them. names on the back yeah. exactly their names and whatever it's important whether it's their football team or or like that you know their their favorite car that's so yeah so those are excellent gifts. Um, yeah, and before I forget, I guess I, I should uh, give uh, Joe Telling uh, a shout out and a thanks for sending you my way because it was his video that actually got you towards to my channel. So, and then, yeah, uh, hopefully a lot more journey. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so taking the story further down uh, the road is, you know, the, the uh, as pandemic evolved, and I think maybe maybe the vaccination, or at least the rates were kind of dropping. Mm -hmm. And um, for these businesses, you know, the gyms to try to stay in business, they started taking their equipment outdoors in a parking lot. So they reopened. And, and by that time, I had bought my own uh, rowing machine, which mm -hmm. that was another big uh, uh, to do because everybody was doing that. Everybody was buying their own equipment to work out at home. And there was like an eight to 10 week waiting list uh -huh. to get on, to get an equipment. So, but I did get my own. I was rowing on YouTube or zoom with friends and, mm -hmm. um, you know, do what I could. But then when the gym opened again in the parking lot, you know, of course we all went and, um, you know, we were six feet apart with a mask on rowing outdoors, not ideal, but it worked. Mm -hmm. It worked until, you know, it started to get towards fall. And, you know, of course, we don't get a lot of rain here in Northern California. You know, sometimes we do. But um, so then it started to rain a little bit. And these machines uh, don't have uh, power connected to them. So it's not a big issue. But the monitor is a sensitive area. And so you've got these 20 machines sitting outside and then it started to rain a little bit. And um, it was an issue. They were putting Ziploc bags on top of them. And I thought, really? you know what? I could do something better. And so I made this thing. And I had just started taking, you know, the Design Academy course and learned enough to be dangerous, I guess. So I made this sort of cover that would fit um, on, the, on the monitor. And basically the way it fits, I put these two grooves inside here mm -hmm. so that the, it would just slide right on top of the monitor case. 
Well, it did a good job and I showed it to them. The thing is, each one of these took about five hours to print and I really didn't know. I don't know if they really wanted to buy it. Mm -hmm. I just didn't see a market for it. So I took it home and I stuck it on my own machine. I figured, well, it's something I made. I want to look at it because I'm proud of it. But it's nothing. It really wasn't good for anything. Uh And then, you know, I started staring at it and I'm thinking, you know what? I got the phone stand. Maybe I put the phone stand on here. These machines actually have come with an app. It's mm-hmm. a Concept2 machine, and it comes with an app called Erg Data, which uh-huh. basically uses Bluetooth to sync up to the machine and sort of takes all your data and, and, and um, syncs it with their database, a logbook, as they call it. And the cool thing about it is uh, you could compare yourself to other people your age around the world on their database. It's very cool. Mm-hmm. So I was just putting the phone on top of here, let it sync. And that worked okay for a while. Mm. And I thought, you know what? I really would like to. Um, by, that, by that time, this indoor gym also started posting videos on their app. Uh, so you could take classes at home. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to do that, but I had to put a computer you know, to the side or my iPad to the side, find a table or something, put it on. So I thought, you know, what if I could make this into a tablet holder instead of just a phone holder. So far, I really like the fact that it's sort of, it's very iterative, right? It's not like you see these sometimes like the finished project and you just see like that end product, but it, like to see how you're describing it started with just the rain cover. And then you were able to connect it with this like phone stand you made. And then that spread another idea. And then it's, it's like, it's slowly evolving into what, what we're going to see it become, which is how these things normally take, you know, take shape. And it usually, like I find with me, a lot of times it's just sitting with a design, just sitting on the chair, leaning back and kind of twisting it in your hand and just giving you that time to think about it. You know, that really leads to the next step. And it's not like it's not like you get there in one step. It's 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 a process of, of letting time in your in your mind to catch up. Yeah, it wasn't nothing that I started with a certain goal in mind to start with. Yeah. And it sort of just came about by accident, mostly, you know, it just staring at something, which is basically what I always do. When I make something, um, I keep staring at it every chance I get. Now, how do I improve it? And Mm -hmm. all of a sudden, the idea hits you. You want to try something. And then I stare at that for a while until some better idea hits me. So uh, basically, by then, I was taking your classes, you know, uh, online, um, more and more, getting deeper. uh, And so I sort of took that same idea and added uh, these horns to it, basically, <laughs> you know, and not adjustable, sort of like a Viking helmet. Yeah, that's um, what it kind of reminds me. Yeah, of. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they're not adjustable. It was just made for my iPad, and so it was great. And I put it on the machine, and it, it actually looks like know, a transformer. Actually, now that I think, like one of yeah, those. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> um, I wasn't very good at understanding tolerances yet about my printer, uh, yeah. so. I think I made these things way, way too tight. Mm-hmm. And so I have to use a blow dryer to kind of heat them up and then shove them down. But they're in there good. I don't think I'd be able to take them out ever. Yeah. So and that worked great. And I would show it to my friends and they go, oh, hey, it'd be kind of cool. But then, you know, when you want to turn something to a product other people could use, then you can't predict what kind of equipment they have, what kind of tablet they have. So it needs to be an adjustable, you know, tablet holder. Mm-hmm. And it was roughly that time I got an email from you um, that you were going to do live classes online. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think one of the lines in it was, if you're stuck in making something, let's get you unstuck. Something like that. Yeah. And I thought, hey, I'm stuck. You know, <laughs> see if I can get unstuck. Yeah. So... That's, that's where the next step was. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that part actually, as you mentioned with the live class, so that's something I do with my, uh, design classes that, um, students have the option now. And I started, it was almost like, it's just a, let, let me see if this, you know, just trying it out, you know, almost kind of be like, let me just throw something on Etsy and see, and see how it works. But yeah, it actually, uh, it, I think students have found that really helpful because you get actually like one you know, one-on-one design. I mean, it's, it's a full class, but you got to bring in your project 
and get some feedback on areas that you you were stuck on, right? Like there, like there were some. Remember, I mean, there were quite a few times because I think um, a few of the classes we just kind of like focused on your design, like because um, you ended up. I mean, I'm sure you'll show the next part where you actually get to sort of uh, adjust it and and how do you, you know, there were quite like these little problems of how do you adjust it without falling off? How do you, yeah, um, how do you get the tolerances right? So, right. Yeah. So what I did is, you know, if you're going back to this, I had these two groups. So I thought maybe I don't need all this extra stuff. Yeah. You know, I could get rid of all that stuff. So I really needed just that, that area. It's just the cover that go on the monitor. So that's basically what I did. And then I added uh, a track. So this is the case that slides on top of the monitor and mm -hmm. I added a track on top. And of course the, the trick was, this is where I'd really got stuck was I put a dovetail on the track and then I made these guides. Um, mm -hmm. Well, like this. And uh, so these guys go back and forth, but their problem was they were falling out. Right. I, I had no idea how to stop it. From and the part, the part you're saying goes over the monitor. That's the monitor on the rowing machine. That it comes Correct. Out. It slides on top of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so, yeah. So all, all that went away and it made it so much simpler. Mm -hmm. And so in one of the classes, I was showing this and you sort of get me right away as soon as you saw it and you said, oh, what if you put a pin on it and put a groove on the track and cut the groove short so it won't go all the way through and it will stop it from going through? And I go, oh. And then I added a bigger opening in the middle. So basically just drop it from the middle <laughs> and then, and so. It's into place, yeah. Yeah, so these were not adjustable. Yeah. And, uh, and then I showed it to one of my friends and he said, well, my tablet has a charger Port at the bottom so i had to put a slot in it to allow for different type of chargers mm -hmm. so i got that far and i was stuck at this for a while and it was great and i was you know able to use my ipad here or anybody else hopefully um could use the ipad here but there was something missing you know as i mentioned earlier uh, yes i could watch a video do a rowing class but it, my phone was still i needed my phone near that thing so I could use that Erg Data app that goes with the rowing machine. So the hardest part was figuring out how to make another attachment so it would hold the phone. Mm -hmm. And that took me probably a couple of months. I, I don't know, it just, one day, I think we were doing uh, in a live class, uh, I think combined cut, uh, or maybe it was also one of your videos. I think you did a, a I think a cover for a camera on one of your YouTube videos. Yeah. Um, yeah and so, cover. correct. Yeah. So that's sort of the idea I took from that. And I, I don't know, it, it, I, I have never seen anything like this thing that I made, but you know, <laughs> I figured it's worth a shot. I try it. So yeah. I sort of put a couple of, well, I, I put a couple, as you could see, uh, rectangles, you know, uh, extruded them here. And did a combined cut, so it did a cut into here. And in fact, I got a strand hanging out. Um, and then I had to play with the tolerances a little bit. But the nice thing about it was it just uh, it snaps in oh, really nice. easy. And um, so you can see this whole thing kind of snaps together in seconds. And the nice thing about it was, which surprised me, it's like a rock solid. It doesn't go anywhere once you attach it. Nice. Um, so yeah, and. Uh, so the phone now goes here, and of course the iPad goes on top, and the, the, the rowing machine monitor is in the middle. So it was all three things all in one place, which is something I hadn't seen before. Nice. Yeah, so that was uh, you know, a lot of <laughs> things that came about because of your classes, honestly. Um, so one question. Had you started using Fusion 360 before you took my classes, or so that that uh, was it? So you had you were you using any other um, modeling software? I or had were not, you not modeling at all. None at all. Um, oh, the okay. only thing I'm familiar with is Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop mm -hmm. because that's what I use on daily basis for my business. Yeah. Um, but that was it. Oh, okay. And so when when you came across my channel, that was your first time you were actually hearing of like Fusion 360, and you used it for the first time. 
I had heard about it, obviously, many times watching everybody's videos, but oh, okay. it was always yes. the portion of their uh, their video that sort of kind of glossed over me and I sort of stopped watching <laughs> because, you know, I don't have no idea what they're talking about, you know. So gotcha. I always wanted to learn it, but I had no idea. Okay, cool. So that is that was that the last version, the way you just showed us? No. So this is basically um, the version I finally came up with. I... Um, like anything, I, I, I don't really want to go out and sell it because I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Well, were you um, so thinking I, at this point, like, hey, I can sell this or were you not even, that wasn't even on your no, mind? No, no, it wasn't. I, I started making it for a few friends, you know, that were also, I know had their machines and there were a couple of guys that I wrote on Zoom with. Um, so I made it for them and they really liked it. And of course, I got some feedback and do this and do that. and then. The thing that really put it over is one of the guys that was in the rowing class with me, he had his own rowing machine at home. He's a former collegiate rower mm -hmm. and big tall guy. And it's really rowing is really meant for tall people. Mm -hmm. And so same with the rowing, rowing machines, which they call ergs, at least mm -hmm. uh, this type of machine is called uh, short for ergometer. And um, so I wanted him to test it. To, because that would be a real feedback and people like me that just picked up rowing from indoor rowing it wasn't the same i wanted somebody because i know that they are using this particular uh, concept two machine by all rowing teams by all colleges you know, so it's a really popular is. machine that most people it is. are using okay it is and being on that app on that logbook i could see how many thousands of people were on it like I don't know, it was like 40,000, something like that. So I knew that there was a decent sized market. Gotcha. But once these guys tested it and they liked it a lot, mm -hmm. gave me a feedback. And then by the encouragement of my, my two daughters, and my wife kept saying, open an Etsy store. And I, I, you know, I signed up for a store and it was like there for like a month or two, but I never put anything on it because yeah. it was sort of overwhelming. I would see all these things that you got to do. And I thought, oh, you know, I, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. I just didn't think anything of it at the yeah. time. I, I think that's actually a really important step you went through where you didn't just make like your first iteration and threw it on there. You gave it to a few friends and actually someone who was an avid rower and said, test it and give me some feedback, you know? And so yeah, you yeah. Know, just put it right away. Yeah. But you were still, it sounds like you were still kind of reluctant. Like you're getting your, your daughters and, and your wife are encouraging you, but you're still not sure yet if you're ready to make the plan. I wasn't. I yeah. wasn't. I really wasn't sure. Um, but, you know, finally, I just got tired of um, just twiddling my thumb, my thumbs. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. I just said, okay, you know what? I'll take the time. I'm going to go take pictures because you got to take a lot of pictures. And yeah. I, I watched a few videos on how to open an Etsy store, what the steps are that you got to go through. And um, so I finally did it. And it was like on a weekend. Um, I want to say maybe it was a Sunday afternoon. And then by Sunday night, I was okay. And well, now what? What am I going to do now? Well, fortunately, because uh, this Zoom growing that I do, I had gone on Instagram. I'm not a big social media guy, you know, uh -huh. so, um, but I, I, got, I got on Instagram because what we do is that we post or one of the, our team leader basically posts the workout of the day that we do twice a week. And then at the end of the workout, we all post our numbers. So we sort of hold each other accountable that mm -hmm. we did the work. And so I was on Instagram and I figured I got to learn about hashtags and what do they mean? <laughs> and what do they do? This pound signal, pound sign. Right. So I had to reach out to my daughters and they helped me out with it. And so I did a post. I did an Instagram post with this thing and I did a hashtag on like, U.S. rowing, the concept to yeah. anything I could think of, I could come up with. I did it, and you know, I didn't know what to expect. And then within minutes, you know, I was getting this like, 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 like. It was like nice. hundreds, and I go, "Whoa, maybe <laughs> I did hit something that people like." Yeah, you know. And then within an hour, I had my first sale from a gentleman oh, wow. from Australia, Australia for all that, all the places. Wow. So within an hour of your first Instagram post, you had a yes. sale from Australia. Yeah, yeah. Australia. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And, and the cool thing is now I've had 10 sales to Australia. Oh, wow. Quite you know, some people actually, 
Yeah, I guess. Some people actually pay more for the shipping costs than they do for this product. Wow. Yeah, so that really makes me feel good. Yeah, um, absolutely. How, uh, I guess talk a little, because rewind, because just that feeling of getting that first sale, like, how, how did that feel to you? It was very cool. It, it was actually really, there's some people think that this is really good. Yeah. But at the same time, now you're nervous. You know, I see all uh-huh. these likes and I'm thinking, what if all these people decide to order? What am I going to do now? I have <laughs> yeah, like one 3D the printer. The other end of the problem, yeah. Yeah, one 3D printer. What the heck am I going to do now? And I'm sorry, <laughs> and it, this thing takes 12 hours to print. Oh, wow, yeah. Right? So, of course, I don't have to do anything during the 12 hours. But so I figured out a schedule if I do one at 7 a.m., then I get home after work at 7 p.m., start the next one, and I just to keep going like that and hoping that nothing goes wrong and everything just prints perfectly. Uh-huh. And, of course, I got creative, and I offered six colors. Mm-hmm. So it's like, wow. Yeah. Um, it was, it was That's more than nice. Apple, man. That's more than Apple offers for their phones. <laughs> I know. <laughs> colors. I probably shouldn't have done that. There's too many choices, um, you know, but... You know, I didn't know which one I would really like best. All the colors were coming out so nice. And I figured, yeah. of course, now I know uh, a majority of people like the black, uh-huh. but there's still some that order the colors. Uh, so what's the percentage of the black ones that you get compared to? The rest I'd of- say probably 80%. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah, you sort of learn. And then, of yeah. course, with encouragement of my wife, I got my second uh, Prusa printer. And I got to say, the, those that have these printers and get them as a kit, it's a work to put them together. It's yeah. like not that simple. And uh, so, you know, once you get it, great. Now I got to spend four nights after work trying to finish mm-hmm. putting this together and hope that it works as, you know, as I finish it. Yeah. Well, you, you choose to get them unassembled, right? Because you, you can get them <laughs> pre-assembled. You could. It costs a lot more, like, yes. Yeah. You like the little punishment of, uh, <laughs> of well, assembly. Well, you know, always... I mean, plus it's fun, maybe I'm sure. you, Yeah, and also I think maybe you learn a little bit more about yeah. the whole thing. And also, it, honestly, I would recommend it because uh, not too long ago I had a, you know clog in my nozzle and i wasn't sure i had to take everything apart and finally figure out yeah. it was the nozzle and i had to replace it but now i know how to do all, right. what everything is so yeah. the terminology and all that and that's what all the youtube videos did for me that i was watching just the terminology of right. what they say something on a hot end or what does that mean yeah i would you know in the plastics industry i, I knew the extruding injection molding but the hot end is not you know, so I had to learn all these little terminologies and what yeah. they meant. No, there's definitely a level of education that you get from assembling it that you're not going to get from, you know, anything else, no matter how, how many YouTube videos you watch, like going through that step really puts you um, at a great advantage when something does go wrong to actually being able to fix it. Um, no, the other thing you said is that, so your wife actually encouraged you to get a second printer, which which is is, is really funny because like if you're in any of these like 3d printing groups, a lot of the memes are about like, like, how do I tell my wife I secretly bought another 3d printer? (laughs) Like, like, you know, someone coming home with flowers, you know, or like trying to, (laughs) trying to hide all their printers from their wives. And here you have your wife, like trying to convince you to get another one. Uh, I tell you, if she had her way, I would buy a few more. Oh, in, really? fact, in fact, truth be told, she I bought the third one and not too long ago. I've had it for maybe two, three months now. Uh-huh. So I have three of them going now, the Prusa nice. And she was telling me to get another one. And I oh. said, no, that's it. <laughs> and I that's have room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you've gotten all Prusas. Uh, all three identical. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I really like it because I could start it. And, you know, once you get it all dialed up, and mm-hmm. you could just forget about it and feel comfortable leaving it for 12 hours. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, you know, I do have failed prints uh, and mainly my fault, uh, something I sort of got careless about. Mm-hmm. But uh, for the most part, they print great. I, I don't have to tweak it. I know there were other printers that were much less expensive. But mm-hmm. from what I learned was everybody was having to do upgrades on them and tweak them until they got perfect. So, mm-hmm. I, And I figured 
I see the video on the factory that they're using their own printers to create right. all these parts and they're running 24 hours a day. And so if they're working, then what do I need to worry about it? Gotcha. So yeah. that's the route I took. Good. Yeah. So, uh, so of course, you know, once you get one product uh, and other things come along with it is uh, dealing with customers on the, on Etsy and, uh, and Etsy basically keeps uh, sending you emails and saying, well, okay, you're shipping it a lot faster than three to five days. Maybe you should do it one to two days. So I go, okay, all right, change it to one to two days. You know, you sort of put pressure on yourself. Oh, okay. And Etsy would say, okay, well, this is selling really well. Why don't you come up with other products like this? So then I did. Um, I sort of made what, the, what I call a light version, basically without the track on top and just a phone holder. Yeah. It's really mainly suited for people that go to the indoor gym that you don't need the iPad on top. Mm -hmm. You just need your phone to sync up with the machine. So, you know, that, that was okay. Not nearly as well as this. Okay. And then, then of course, you get feedback from customers. Some people, you know, you can't think about what, how everybody is going to use your product. Uh, some people were using their phone without a phone case. Well, without a phone case, you know, a hard surface on a hard surface will start to slide around when this machine, you're rowing on it. So, mm -hmm. and so immediately I had to make modifications. I put a non-skid. I actually had to do a redesign. These were full circles before. I changed it to sort of three quarters and mm -hmm. then put a, a non-skid rubber here and inside here. Mm -hmm. So then there's just a lot less movement. Nothing's going to fall off the machine and you're going to break your phone. And um, so for, that was fairly on, early on. Mm -hmm. So most of the products I have shipped, which now is close to 230 of these. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. And yeah, 12 so hours it's, each. Are they, or they, have you um, been able yeah. to optimize the time any, or is it still 12 hours? It's, it's printing perfectly, so I don't, just don't want to mess around with it. Yeah. There's things you can probably do to speed the process a little bit, but... Mm -hmm. And you have to tweak your print. So then you may have some failed parts until you figure it out. Yeah. They're just coming out too good for me to even mess with them. Gotcha. And how There's, are you, uh, up, uh, I was going to ask you, how are you keeping up with inventory on that? But you can finish your thought if you're going to say something. Oh, uh, no, no. Um, I said, I was going to say that it, it, there is like about 10, 15 minutes of cleanup, you know, removing supports, uh, especially okay. on the knee here. Um, and then putting these rubber pads on and then gluing this, uh, and of course, there's the packaging part. Um, yeah, the, the keep up, you know, of course, you know, you don't have sales every day. And originally, I did. And I had maybe one weekend that I had maybe nine or 10 orders. And I had some, but obviously, I had to print nonstop. And I had originally set it for three to five days turnaround. So mm -hmm. that gave me enough time. But once I sort of learned what people were ordering, what colors and that sort of thing, and so I started making like four or five of the black ones and then one of each color. Now, that was my inventory. And as soon as the one color got ordered immediately, I will replace it with another okay. print. Yeah. And same thing with the black ones. Yeah. So yeah, there's busy days uh, on a weekend and then there's two, three days, maybe you don't get an order. Mm -hmm. You just really don't know. So once I sort of I figured it out and it made, made it a little bit easier. Yeah, so it sounds like, so the nice thing is like, you can sort of use existing data to predict like what you're going to get. And for the most part, it seems to be pretty consistent where you can go ahead and um, just uh, anticipate like, okay, I just need to have like five of these kind of ready to go, maybe or however many are just, you know, and, and you have your system in place that when you like a color gets used you just print another one so you you tend to develop right. like your own systems that tend to work right and right you, know, you learn as unless, you go. unless like a huge like influencer with like you know five hundred thousand subscribers maybe like you know tweets your product and then yeah then yeah you so like a big, uh, <laughs> to catch yeah up. then that'll be a problem right so i I mean, yes, I would love, of course, who wouldn't yeah. want to have It's a good problem things. to have, absolutely, yeah. But you've got to be able to handle it. Otherwise, right. you're going to disappoint your customers and you're exactly. going to lose all the business. So yeah. I have to be careful. And I try to be very, very responsive to the customers. Yeah. Immediately after I get an order, I send out an email thanking them for the order and letting them know when I'm going to ship it, which is mostly either the same day or the next day. Yeah. Um, 
And then as soon as I ship it, I'll follow that up again with another email, giving it more information, such as don't leave this in a hot car. Right. You know, so that sort of thing, you know, just so that they know. Um, and then, you know, then listen to what they have to say. You know, one of the issues that some people have with this is I can't, I can't design this for thickness of everybody's uh, iPad or tablet cases. Right. Yeah. So basically they have to take it out of the cover and put it in here. Um, well, this is sitting on top of a monitor. Uh, the system monitor and the machine has some movements on it. So some people get nervous. They buy a thousand dollar tablet right. and they don't have a case on it. So it makes them nervous. So then I saw some people were posting pictures and their reviews. They love the product, but they were actually putting the iPads on here, which is something I did not design for. It wasn't, it wasn't strong enough. The layer lines um, are going this way and it's just yeah. not strong enough to hold but they were using it and they were happy with it. Oh, and, cool. and, and one person even, I think, uh, had a stress fracture right there and he put a duct tape on it. He didn't care. He goes, <laughs> it was like, I go, what? That's yeah. so, and that sort of made me think. And then that it was another problem I had to solve. And how am I going to solve this problem? And so that came basically my next product, which I just posted um, last weekend. Uh, and basically that's, um this one uh-huh. which i call well i call the other one air caddy uh and this one i call air caddy flip uh-huh. basically uh ed from our live class suggested it and i went with it yeah. and uh, and i just reversed the placement so now the ipad goes to the bottom oh, okay. and the phone goes to the top that so that so that's really interesting just that approach there because Um, It kind of shows the importance of feedback. Like here, people are using it in a way you totally weren't anticipating. But, uh, you know, the fact that they're actually posting pictures of it on social media, you you get to see that and then you realize, oh, okay, this is maybe something that they want. So it kind of goes into the next iteration of the product. Let Let me give them what they want. And so you create an option where they can actually put the iPad on the bottom instead of the top. So, cool. Well, this actually uh, created an, a sort of dilemma for me, you know, uh, uh-huh. just about when I was about to post this, I would get an order. And so I'm thinking if I ship this, and if I think I got an order from Australia or New Zealand, actually, to, recently, um, and they paid like 50 some dollars for shipping, which is more than the yeah. product itself. And how much, uh, how much do you sell it for? Oh, $49.99, which includes free shipping. Okay, so they but when they buy it from New Zealand or Australia, they pay shipping. They're, they're paying what, like fifty dollars in? Well, I think ground, you know, U.S. mail is like twenty eight dollars typically, uh-huh. but I, some of them order it because that takes like a month to get there. Okay. Yeah, so I think some of them ordered like sort of expedited more, and I think the one order from New Zealand was like fifty eight dollars for shipping. Oh wow. And I emailed the guy. I said, look, I'm coming up with this and I'm just going to post it just now. And I want to give you the option. Uh, I don't want you to see this after I ship it. And I said, wait, I didn't know about this. Well, he he said, no, you know what? I'm going to stick with the original because I'm 6'5". My son is 6'3". And it's great that it's on top. I prefer that. Nice. So I go, okay. So then people do want the option. And this is not necessarily better than that one. So I do offer both. And um, so far, after I did another Instagram post with this and immediately I had two or three sales. But uh, we'll see how it goes. That was last Sunday. Cool. You know, obviously for the shorter people, this is sort of sits up a little higher. Yeah. And so you got to look up. Okay. It, it's if, you, if you're just rowing and watching a movie, which a lot of people are doing, just, okay. you know, mm-hmm. rowing for fun and watch a movie or yeah. you know, sort of binge watch a TV series. Um, that while sitting on a roller, so you don't get bored. Okay. Uh, so, you know, it depends on where you want to put it on um, the, uh, the top or the bottom. Yeah. Uh, the bottom one obviously gives you the advantage of leaving the, the phone, uh, the iPad cover on, mm-hmm. and it's really easy to remove it. There's other alternatives. In fact, the company that makes the rowing machine, they came up with their own um, iPad holder. Mm-hmm. They have a phone holder they sell separately. They, they sell an um, iPad holder, but you have to replace the whole arm. You got to take everything machine apart and uh, replace the arm. And 
then instead of the arm being in this angle, sort of near you, you have to put it straight up. So mm -hmm. the iPad would be straight up. Otherwise, it'll be tilted forward. You can't see it. So there's some disadvantages. Yeah. Um, and the, the advantage to this is uh, it's really easy to install. Um, there's no installation. It's an assembly. Mm -hmm. And it takes a few seconds to remove. Mm -hmm. And you can put it right back on. And you can move it to another machine. They do make uh, ski ergs and bike ergs. And this would work well with their ski erg as well. Wow. Um, well, that's that's a nice plus. You can you can actually transfer it to the different uh, equipment that they have. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but now it's like, what else do I do? I have to come up with a new pro uh, product or project. <laughs> now that you're doing it, you know, you're, you're sort of in it. Yeah. And uh, so well, you have to constantly think about it. Yeah. And the neat thing is really kind of how fast you can get that idea out, right? Because like that next iteration is just create the next design in Fusion 360. And, you know, 12 hours later, you've got a new a new part, which going through, you know, traditional methods, you'd have to send that out to, you know, some, some place Actually, that's going to manufacture it for you and then wait, you know, uh, weeks or months to get it back. Actually less. I mean, one of the benefits of this being five parts is when I had to redesign, uh, you know, a new iteration of one, it, it'll just be a quick print, maybe three, four hours of gotcha. just one part. So, so the 12 hours is for really like nice. each one if you were to print them separately. It's a full train. Total. Yeah, the whole thing uh, is okay. one. I, yeah, with supports and everything takes 12 hours. Uh, okay. So you lay, all out, one go. you lay it out as one print where all the pieces on the bed together. Correct. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. So if you're doing a new part, you just need that one part. It's going to be a lot faster. Right. And that's another thing is, you know, when you have failed prints, it's not always necessarily the whole thing that's a failed print. Maybe yeah. um, uh, just one of the items are, is bad. And then so you got all the other parts. So all you have to do is reprint one one piece and then you got a full uh, unit gotcha. again. Gotcha. So that's been pretty good. Maybe um, uh, we can transition to, I guess, sort of maybe lessons learned from Etsy. Um, like when, when you made that plunge to go into throwing your design on Etsy, like what, you know, what you learn, or if you had to like do it all over again, was there anything you would do different or any advice you could give to someone who's, who's kind of in, in that position where they have an idea for a product and they want to get it out. Um, you know, we're, we kind of live in a really unique age right now where you can actually do that. I mean, when you think about how quickly you can go from idea to actual part and in your case, we're not even talking about prototype part. We're talking about like real end product, right? That you're shipping out to a customer. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's pretty amazing that, that we have that. You can go from idea to design, having software like Fusion 360, you know, available. Not only do we have like capable design software, we have 3D printers that can make these end products. And we see you doing, and as you mentioned, like, uh, Prusa actually does, you know, they make they 3D print parts for their own printers and you have other companies using it for actual end products and you hear it just as like prototyping, which it's great for prototyping, but we can see that you can go even further than that. Um, and then you add the other element of having uh, like places like Etsy where you can just throw your product into when, so it's like, just like all these things kind of come together and really, you know, kind of enable you to, have uh, like your own little like production facility and, and, and really start a business, you know, um, quite easily compared to what it used to be. So I guess uh, taking all that together, anything that you like advice that you would give um, to someone who's looking, who's in that stage of they, maybe they've got that idea or they're not sure whether it would work or maybe they're just, they're, there's just so many unknowns that they're not sure, you know, that it's a bit intimidating to kind of get off the ground. Like what advice or what lessons would you give? Well, actually, I, you know, again, I had to do a lot of research on watching YouTube videos on Etsy and different mm -hmm. uh, platforms. Uh, I did like Etsy. I mean, it, it, you got to understand that it's going to cost you some money to be on there. Yeah, there is no monthly fees to be on Etsy, uh -huh. but Etsy takes their cut and Rightfully so. I mean, right. basically, they're hosting your product and they're handling their credit card fees and everything. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, they're handling the shipping. You know, of course, you pay for the shipping, but you get at a discounted rate. So they do have fees. And also, the, the thing that's more important than even that is they advertise for you. Now, yes, mm -hmm. you can buy Etsy ads and you pay up for it up front. Um, but 
I'm not doing, I did that for a little bit, but I'm, I'm not doing that because if I, if you go on Google and search for um, concept two iPad holder, my iPad holders show up on the yeah. top of the screen. And, and that's big. I, like, like that ranking on Google for like your product is, is huge. So yeah, the advertising part is a very <laughs> significant part of it. I mean, they do take a cut. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. If you if you click on that ad and you purchase the product, they take fifteen percent right. on mm-hmm. top of the twenty percent that you. So basically, thirty five percent will will be used up, and that includes, um, I think, your shipping costs in there. So and then of course so it, that's if if someone Google's i like the uh, or uh, concept to iPad holder and Google shows them your link and they click on it, then. Etsy is able to trace that that they were able to get there because of their paid advertisement. So therefore, they'll take a bigger cut. Yeah. So on the on the on the app that they have, and you, know, you go in to set up your store, they have mm-hmm. all those areas, and you could see what sales were driven through their ad. So okay. you, you can see everything. They have a breakdown and everything. It gives you great analytics. Now, how so, about if you put if someone goes through your website, clicks on a direct link to your Etsy shop? You and know. yeah, so well, I don't have a website, but say those Instagram uh, posts yeah. that I did, it'll tell me that I drove the t- uh, the traffic for the yeah. sale. You know, from and Instagram, what's the so it knows there with their cut. There's no fees. There's oh, no. Extra so they don't fees. take anything, and so you. Well, they take they take the standard fees, like the credit you know, card. Like I said, the credit card fee, yeah. the sale fee. They take twenty cents. Um, I think I forget it was twenty cents every sale, okay. and then they charge you this this inventory thing that every basically every couple of months for every item you have you charge you 20 cents mm-hmm. just a one-time fee okay so there's some small fees here and there and they kind of add up yeah. but so you figure about 20 percent. they would like you to offer free shipping they promote you more if you do offer free shipping mm-hmm. okay so when you come up with a product you want to make sure you don't sell yourself short you need to right. figure out all these costs so anticipating then, the pricing that if you're going to do right, yeah, yeah, and then of course your time. You know, the hardest part is the printer is doing the work for twelve hours. What do I charge for that? That is not an easy answer. I don't really know the answer to that. I yeah. sort of based it on other products that I saw, and then most of the videos I watched. They said if people really want your product, they will pay for whatever it is. Don't sell, don't sell it too cheap. Yeah. So I, 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 think I I've, and I've heard that that's a problem that maybe like entrepreneurs really don't anticipate, like they don't price their product right. Um, and, and they end up like actually selling themselves short. They don't price it high enough to anticipate all these other things like advertisement and shipping and uh, all the costs. If you're doing it from the first time that you're not aware of. Yeah. Right. So it took me a while. I had to come up with a number and twenty nine ninety nine seemed to be the right number. I I'd had one guy complain about the price, but that was it. Mm-hmm. Um, and he loved like the product. Yeah. He loved the product, but he gave me a three star review because he thought it was too expensive. Uh, that, that was like, he said, best uh, idea <laughs> ever. <Yeah. laughs> Great engineering, but it's too expensive. I'm like, yeah. really, seriously? Uh, I've had, you know, of course, you're going to get people um, either order it for their machine and it's the wrong product, the, the wrong machine, the wrong monitor, or it's just they're just too nervous about their iPad being in there without a case. And they say, you know what? Or they have, you know, I only have the rowing machine. I don't have the ski or the bike. But those machines also have the same monitor. So technically, this would work. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's some limitations that those mat- machines will provide, such as where other parts of the machine are, where maybe it will interfere with the, the phone holder or something. So they mm-hmm. couldn't use it. Um, so I don't question it immediately. I refund them their money and I email them a, a shipping label so they can ship it right back to me. That's happened maybe three times. Okay. And I've got to say, I think two out of three times, people left a review of, with a five-star review. Oh, really? Which Even though they've asked important. for a refund. Is, yeah. So that, I love that's the product. a very important concept and to, um, or I guess uh, an important thing to keep in mind that, it, you know, we treat your customers right, right? Because those reviews really matter in, in right. Etsy into like how well your product does. So even if someone says, well, this wasn't for me, but as long as you 
then you know you're responsive and you you give them their refund and 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 you know they do they send it back was that what happens do they repackage it they have they have they keep the box and they just stick the label on it and ship it back and okay. To me, it's it's fine because now I have inventory. I could yeah. ship it to somebody else. You know, yeah, I examine exactly. it and I make sure everything works and there's no yeah. scratches or marks on it. And if do there is, I change the part. Shipping back or do they do? I do. You pay for the shipping. I send them a label back. You know, okay. the cost of shipping for this thing is less than five dollars for U.S. mail. So I don't I don't question. It. I'm not going to worry about five dollars. Yes, I would love to say no, no refund. But yeah. you know what? That's just going to leave a bad taste and bad reviews, and I don't, I don't want that. Yeah, I think that's more important to me yeah. that people are. Um, you know, one of the nice things is the guy that left me a three star review. He had a different type of machine that I cannot test on. I mean, he had an iPad Mini, and the machine is more It's called a dynamic roller. Ours is more a static, so everything moved on that machine. So. So he said, oh, maybe the tolerance could be this or that or whatever. And originally he had asked me a bunch of questions about it. And I explained to him everything. But I said, look, I have not tested it. I'm willing to send it to you. If you don't like it, I send you a label, ship it right back to me. No problem. I give you a full refund. Well, he decided not to do that. He decided to leave a review instead and say, well, I had to jerry-rig it to make it work, but I love it. And, you know, I, he kept the, the thing and he didn't return it. He, so the nice thing on Etsy is you could actually post a response to their review. And I, I you know, of course, you know, I, I won't lie. I, I, I sometimes do this. And I sort of like when somebody upsets me, or I think it's just a stupid thing they did. I would write a sort of nasty email and nasty. And then once I get out of my system, I hit delete. And I say, <laughs> You're absolutely right. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's so. That's a good. That's a good thing. Usually, like when you write an nasty email, it's probably a good idea to wait 24 hours before sending it. <laughs> Absolutely, don't yeah. don't write it if you're mad. And write it, but don't send it. Just, yeah, 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 you can write it, it. Read it. <laughs> Get it out of your system. Hit delete, and then say you're absolutely yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. That seems okay. to work uh, most of the yeah. time. Okay, so treat the customers right. Yeah, and, um, you got to understand that it's a business. You know, yeah. once you start it, you can't just say, oh, you got to be responsive. You got uh, mm -hmm. Etsy actually keeps you to task on that. Mm -hmm. They've come up with this thing they're called a star seller. And there's three categories in it is one is we were responsiveness, answering emails. Uh, one is five star reviews and mm -hmm. one is shipping on time. And mm -hmm. you got to be at 95 percent or higher. So in two categories in uh my shipping on time and my responsiveness i'm at 100 percent okay my reviews i'm at 88 or 89 okay. and i would get to like 94 percent i'm like so close and then i get a four-star review and yeah. somebody writes something really nice but for whatever reason they put four i, I don't know the extra star <laughs> you know and then that then none you need to get 10 more five-star reviews to get back to to replace make that basically with, for, make up for that four star, four star so it's not yeah. easy yeah, yeah. So, so you really got to be on top of your game to really um if you really want to do it you got to make sure you treat it as a business and why is that important does that mean do they promote you more the higher the rating i haven't figured it out yet but it's just something to put out there and i so i haven't been one yet to know exactly what that <laughs> is <laughs> and i think there's a lot of pushback from other sellers they oh you know i don't have time to respond to all my customers but yeah. you know that's all bs you know if you really want to do your business right you need to be responsive and so you know it's just the goal that they put out there and yeah. i like to achieve it if i can gotcha the, the the shipping now you said that they measure how fast you ship it is that something where they automatically get an update once you ship it? So you could ship through their service. So they actually sell you a USPS shipping label. Oh. So you could just say, oh, you want to purchase it, $4.80 or whatever usually. And I say, mm -hmm. yeah, and I have a Dymo label printer right next to me here. And I just, you know, does a, a label for it. Mm -hmm. And then I print out a basically a packing list or an invoice and I put that inside. So, yeah, they make it really easy for you. Gotcha. You don't have to think about it. And like and I said, if you want to do a return, they do it. Gotcha. And shipping in the, for anyone who orders in the U.S., shipping is free. I offer it for free shipping. Yeah. Okay. Cool.
So you got to keep all of that expenses in mind when you're trying yeah. to come up with your price. Nice. Now, you were saying that somebody wants to start. Uh, I was watching an interview with this young lady. Um, she makes, she got into 3D printing mm -hmm. uh, relatively about the same time as I did uh, during a pandemic. And she makes cookie cutters. Mm. And she has, so I tell you, the, the trick that the people that are doing really well on Etsy are using is don't go in inventing something new. Well, I didn't really invent something new. There are products similar yeah. on there, but only do one thing, one or the other, not both. Uh, so I sort of improved on what was there, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but cookie cutter, and if you're familiar with Fusion 6, 360, mm -hmm. and you could do um, a rendering of your product, then a lot of times she doesn't even make any of them. So she has no inventory of these products. So what they do is, they just throw designs uh, on the site, as many mm -hmm. designs as they can, until one hits. So the idea is, just, okay, today I'll do 10 more new designs, and uh -huh. I just do a rendering of it and post the rendering. I only print it if somebody orders it. Yeah, that's a neat so, idea. Yeah, so you can you can just like kind of experiment, like just especially Fusion has that nice rendering capability, so you can just throw the rendering and once you know don't even have to make it until they order and especially if you're doing a cookie cutter i mean that probably prints you know in, in less than an hour for some yeah. designs and you can just go ahead and and ship it out when it's done yeah so the trick with that is more doing photography like i yeah. think she had to probably make a cookie of her own uh, or i'm not exactly sure how they do that because i see some really fancy cookies but yeah. really they're not selling that design they're just selling the cookie cutter so how they're getting all that, who's uh, doing that, I don't know. It's, but, it's, so it's selling, selling the sizzle and not the steak. Is, isn't that a marketing term? Like it, That's the key. If you want to sell the cookie cutter, you show some beautiful cookies or maybe you show like, you know, your kid biting into the cookie with a huge smile on her face. <laughs> That'll sell the cookie cutter, you know, without even well, showing the, the actual product. The biggest stores on Etsy are stores that sell shirts, shirts, mm. T-shirts, that sort of thing, because you could do it for free. You could throw a design on there for free. That's another thing. They do thousands of designs. You just do it, put it up for free. And there's these sites that you can buy the 3D, not the 3D, but they buy the model from. Basically, mm -hmm. their app, whatever shirt you pick, puts the shirt on that person with your design as if they were wearing it yeah. in different lifestyle pictures. And you post those. So again, it costs you virtually nothing until one of those ideas hits and then yeah. they sort of uh, take that to the next step. Maybe they would do a hoodie or a hat or a sticker. Yeah. Uh, just try to build off of that one product that they're selling a lot of. So it really allows you to just kind of test a bunch of different like ideas that you have without actually making the part. You know? And then finally, when you hit something that strikes a chord with people and all the orders come in, you're like, okay, that's it. <laughs> Go with that one, you know, and then start making Basically, it. Yeah, yeah, basically, your investment is 20 cents. Each new design you post costs you 20 cents. Okay. So that's it. That's the only investment you have in it. So nice. how yeah, can you go wrong? The postage stamp, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So that's why I recommend Etsy, for at least for people that are starting out. Yeah. I think a lot of them, maybe after a while, go to other sites, the Shopify or Amazon yeah. or whatever. I'm thinking about starting Amazon store. I sort of done the same thing that I did with Etsy. I sort of got the store, but I haven't posted anything. Yeah, like it. I, yeah. Because it's, you know, when I started Etsy, I thought, wow, this is overwhelming. There's a lot of steps that I got to do to set up the, the product. Uh -huh. But Amazon takes it to the next level, man. It's just a lot more complicated. Yeah. So I'm watching videos on how do we actually do it. Okay. So that's maybe one day I'll have an Amazon step. step. Like Etsy, like it's that, like get to that step first and then right. and you can, there are options out there to graduate to sort of. Uh, well, other something like ones. Amazon will have a monthly fee of maybe $39, right? Mm -hmm. So you spending money on Etsy, you really just the 20 cents here, 20 cents there. If you don't sell anything, it costs you really next to nothing. So we'll let you um, go on to Amazon and then we'll come back <laughs> next year okay. to do a round two of the interview <laughs> to, <Hopefully. see> you, <laughs> to uh, let us know what, uh, what you've learned <laughs> from scaling up to Amazon. Um, yeah. Okay. No, this has been really great. Any, any sort of other last uh, tips you would give either like any part of the whole process from design to 3d printing inventory to uh, 
to Etsy or promoting just anything you think we missed that you that you would want? Well, to- I think uh, so. I sort of have to circle back to the beginning. Uh, yeah. Honestly, I I couldn't have done any of the stuff that I have in front of me without taking your course. And I'm not advertising for you because you asked me to. I just, I think it's the key thing. Uh, none of this would have happened had I not taken your course, had I not watched Joel and telling me to go watch your videos. So if anybody has been similar to what I've been doing and watching all these videos on YouTube and want to know if they should get a 3D printer and then what next, mm-hmm. this is a journey. This is basically what you could go through. and. Mm-hmm. And it's not really that difficult. It takes your time. It costs you really hardly anything. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, uh, even now, of course, you know, but I'm, I'm still part of your weekly class. And every Tuesday we meet on uh, yeah. a certain time for about an hour and a half. And anytime we have, you always ask us to show you what we've made. So we show you whatever we've made and any issues we have. And, you know, you sort of help us through it. And if we're stuck somewhere in three, uh, Fusion 360, you walk us through how to do it correctly and what the other approaches are. So if anybody is thinking about doing something like this, yes, it's great. You could you could learn a lot of things from watching YouTube videos, but having somebody to hold your hand when you need it, that's just a game changer. So I would highly, highly recommend somebody watching this to take the course, take the free course, and see if that's something they want to do, and then maybe join us on the weekly course online. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, I, I, and you were, I think you, you were like in my original course, like when I first started offering the live classes, but uh, um, yeah, that's something I've kept going because I, I can see how valuable it is to students. I mean, because I think about when I first started learning Fusion 360, I started pretty early where there was there really wasn't much out there and it was so frustrating to try to um, look at like the little tutorials that were there to try to figure it out. And, and I, I just know that feeling of being stuck. And especially when you've got like a good idea of something you want to just get out of your head, like place it like on the screen and you can't, you know, because you just, you, you, you don't know how to do it. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of where, you know, what I, I try to approach it as I think about like, what would have I wanted you know, um, if I go back to when I first started using Fusion 360, that would have definitely been it. Like having the ability to have someone say, oh, because a lot of times it's, oh, what you need is this tool that you never knew existed, right? Like just go, go to Revolve <laughs> and there it is, you know? Um, so yeah, no, that, that's great to hear the feedback and now valuable. Um, you found the courses and, and the live class that, that you also have the yeah, option absolutely. to yeah, and not only that, but like you see it, like what you've been able to make in your journey, you know, like you said, uh, uh, how many have you sold so far again? What was that number? Almost 230. I think it was 228. Wow. And, like and then that was, uh, you said $10,000 and, and, and within five months, that's an important five number months. within five months. And that's $10,000 in sales that you, that you passed. So yeah, that's, that's absolutely, uh, uh yeah. And, and I was going to say, and the cool thing is, um, and I mentioned uh, on New Zealand and Australia, but I've sold to England, France, Germany, India, Japan, Newfoundland, Canada. Um, so a lot of other countries. It's kind of cool. You get to talk to people from around the world. You know, it's multinational. Really cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. Yeah. So Kayvon, if someone's watching this right now and they said, "Hey, I want one of those or uh, caddies," where where can I get one? Well, obviously, uh, Google search concept to uh, iPad holder it will be right at the top of the page. Um, so the best thing to do. Wait, but OK, so they can either search um, a concept to iPad holder. Yeah. Or just go or, to Etsy. Uh, my store is KP 3D makes. OK, um, that that's out. another thing. <laughs> that's another thing. When you go to Etsy trying to come up with a name, all the names yeah. are taken. <laughs> so uh, Got to get creative. Okay, I'll put that on the on the screen so they can see it. But one more time, they just go right to Etsy. So just Etsy.com and then they type on the search. So uh, it's it's usually, yes, you could do that or you could do Etsy.com slash shop slash KP3D makes. Okay. That would be directly we'll, to my store. We'll do that because I think you'll get a bigger percentage of the cut if they go straight to the link instead of Googling it, right? Correct. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> yes. we'll, we'll do that and I'll have the link. So... Uh, if anyone wants to check out the uh, 
the iPad holder, they can go straight to it. Uh, but uh, Kayvon, yeah, thank you very much for this. Um, so I, I think a lot of our um, uh, subscribers here are going to find it very useful. Um, and hopefully it'll inspire a few people to, you know, that idea that they've kind of had on, you know, in the back of their mind that they can actually take that plunge and make it and, and start selling, um, you know, because even just, I think just, uh, you know, besides just making the money from selling something that you made, like how rewarding that is, but just what you kind of described in the beginning, the beginning of how satisfying it is to create something that someone else like pays for and they find it useful and it like improves their life. That's just a very satisfying thing that, that I can tell you just coming, just from seeing it within my own product with my online courses. But you think you have that similar uh, feeling with, you know, having an actual physical product that you're selling people that are helping, you know, that they're paying for and they're happy with. It's just, you know, it, it's, it's hard to put into words, but it's a really good feeling. <laughs> it definitely is. It's hard to believe. Yeah. <laughs> you ask yeah. me, but yes, very, very exciting. All right, Kayvon, thank you. And, uh, <laughs> All right, Vladimir. That, yeah. It was great to be with you. You too. See you next Tuesday. Yep, see you in class. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. All right, I hope you enjoyed that interview. When you think about it, it's crazy how fast you can go these days from idea to physical prototype to end product. And with marketplaces like Etsy, how fast you can test the waters to see if there's demand. Not only how fast, but how inexpensive it is to get there compared to like 10 years ago. However, you want to be prepared for when that idea strikes. So if you're not fully comfortable yet with designing your own 3D models, then you'll want to get started with my Fusion 360 Quick Start course. Or if you're already comfortable with the basics, then check out my other courses, including my weekly live class on my website at desktopmakes.com. This is the exact same path Kayvon took, and we see how this small investment paid off big for him. All right, guys, I'll be back in a few with a new Fusion 360 project for you.